Hi everybody, time for April Pick a Stick Challenge and Eva is our lovely host this month. Thanks. Hi everyone, it's Peg and I am from Bits and Pieces by Peg. And today I am part of a collaboration which has been going on as we're in our second year. We have a Facebook group. It's called Pick a Stick Challenge. And I'm getting ready to do the April challenge. So I have a journal out here. I have a bunch of different paints and things. And um, these are the challenge prompts. There are 10 prompts and a wild card. And so I can choose to do one of the prompts or a wild card. I'm just sliding some papers in behind so I don't get this all over because paint tends to be messy. And uh, I'm going to get started here. So first thing says add black marker or pen. Well, I think before I do that, I want to just lay down a real thin layer of gesso. Got a gift card here, and let's see, I need a palette knife or something to get that out with. Doesn't take much, but you know, like Dina Wakeley says, this is the underpants of your painting. So it's kind of like sealing up your papers by putting this coat of gesso on there. So I have that. And I have my rag here. I use old rags that can be washed over and over again. And then I have a gift card, and I'm just going to spread that gesso on my page. It's not going to be even. There will be places that it takes and places that it doesn't. I don't care because I like to see that texture and depth and things on the page. So um, we're just getting a little bit down for a base coat. And, you know, by the time you get done spreading this out, it's almost dry. I'm going to hit it real quickly with a heat tool. Step one of the challenge says add black marker or pen. Well, I have these Liquitex Montana type pens. I've just been sitting in my stash. Probably need to shake that paint up that's inside of there. And I'm going to add some marks using, oops, uh, getting paint everywhere. That's okay. I'm not too worried about that. Just going to put a few marks down with that paint. Kind of dab up some of the blobby stuff so I don't stick my hand into it. So I'm going to start to speed things up a bit. This took me a bit over an hour and um, yeah, <laughs> I don't think you want to sit through an hour of me putting marks on a piece of paper. So step two said use a crimper or something corrugated. So I found some a cardboard box and I'm just pulling the backer off of it and I'm going to use some paint in um, I'm going to add color to my background using that corrugated paper So I got some paint out and watered it down a bit uh, with some water and then I'm going to apply it to that corrugated paper and use that kind of like a stamp and stamp that down on my page adding some texture to the background. I think 
what I came up with for this was a 9 by 12 um, journal that I'd been working out of for several years. Uh, you know how it is, you go back and forth between journals. And so this one, um, I, I think it was the next step that said draw big uh, that got me thinking about going big. Step three says reuse an old greeting card. Well, I had pulled several pieces out and I decided to pick this uh, daisy looking image. Um, I had painted it up and had it on the front of a greeting card and it was old and I thought, well, this was appropriate, so I'll use that. Um, the problem with it, it was not a complete image, so I'm, I'm fussing about where is it going to go on the page, and I really need multiples of that. But, you know, in the end, uh, I went ahead and put it down because it's just a page element. Step four is the draw big. And, yeah, I am thinking about what am I going to do to draw big, and I go back to those uh, paint markers that I pulled out previously and add some more to the background using those paint markers. So I want to extend an invitation here. Uh, if you haven't joined us at the Pick Stick Challenge group on Facebook, please come over and join us. This is a monthly challenge. We do monthly artist trading cards and journal pages. Um, there are lots of people that are joining in and lots of art to share. So um, please come join us. Step five says add dictionary text. So I have these dictionary pages and um, I'm going to punch some of those out. I've added some art anthology sprays to them because I didn't just want that brownish paper. Uh, I wanted some kind of color in the background of those. So I punched some stars and circles and I'm going to apply those to the page using some matte medium. Step six says use something from the opposite season. Well it's spring here and the opposite season to me is fall and that's when the leaves are falling. So I pull out a leaf stencil and some ink, some archival ink, and I believe this is a purple. Um, and I am just stenciling that leaf onto the background in various places, adding another layer of texture to the page. Step seven is make a list. So I happen to have this pencil. It was something that was in a gift package from uh, Stamp Scrapbook Expo. And I thought, well, okay, I'll just write words of what I've been doing, you know, gesso, um, gel medium, all the things that are on this page. And um, I think this is a water soluble pencil, so I wasn't sure what it was going to do, but yeah we'll just go with that so the next step which is step eight says use gel medium or gesso to create a resist image well um i use a couple of things i use gesso to start with and i'm going to use more than one stencil here uh, this is a diane reevely star stencil and i start with the gesso and just sponge that on and then i think well you know i, I think i would like to also use something clear so I can see the color underneath. So I get out some clear gesso and another star stencil and um, I think that one was a Tim Holtz one. Anyway, uh, I stencil in clear gesso also to um, make a resist image. And I'll try to give you some close-ups at the end so that you can see what effect that has on the page. Step 9 says Make a grid of circles, squares, objects. Okay, I'm looking at my page and I'm saying we're on step nine 
and this looks like a hot mess and there's nothing that's coming together there's no cohesion so I thought okay I'll put these circles down and then I will use a circle stencil over the top and all those circles should surely pull things together right hmm not so much you'll see my big fail here um, I'm going to use uh, several different colors of paint and you know I think it was a good idea to some extent but yeah did not work I really think this might be a great technique if you're using it on step one or two but let's face it folks we're on step nine and uh, this was not doing what I wanted it to do which was to pull things together um, it just makes a bigger mess on my page so then I'm thinking well what can I do to change this out and of course I make mud uh, playing around with colors and then I think okay I need some gesso to cover some of that up because that is turning into a real mess so I get out some gesso and that uh, stencil that I had originally and I'm just gonna go back and cover some of that up because I'm not happy with it and what do we do when we don't like what we're doing well we get out something like gesso and we cover it over and we start again because it's only paint and paper right so I'm still not happy with what's going on but at least it's toned down and not looking so much like a hot mess and then I look and I've got one more step to do which is step 10 and step 10 says add something another artist gave you well I had some uh, papers from Jane Davenport a pack of papers from Jane Davenport that a friend had given me and I thought well this is a pretty big page I need some kind of image or something that pulls this together that's large enough to cover a 9 by 12 double page spread and so I thought well that's that's the best thing I can come up with because cards and small little things are not going to cut it when you're looking at all of this and we're down to step 10 so I pull out some paper yeah I'm thinking this image will work but the color mm, not so much so I have to add a little bit of uh, color to the background and I thought well I'll use some archival ink it's a little translucent and I can shade uh, the background that's there and cut this image out and kind of uh, pull that page together just using those inks So I chose to use all 10 steps from the April Pick Stick Challenge. And uh, you did have a choice of using a wild card that was using food as a stamp, celery stumps, uh, you know, potatoes, apples, whatever you wanted to use. Just wasn't the way I wanted to go. I did use that on the artist trading card for the month. I'll try to put a link um up above there for you so that you can see that if you're interested at all in seeing how I created that and then I continue you know trying to pull this together I'm going to use that same star stencil and add a few of those um, just to splatter across and you know unify that whole image and I'll give you some final shots um, and hope you come and join us for the monthly challenge and i want to be sure and thank eva uh, we have another guest artist coming in next month so it will be another exciting month with another guest artist and um, i'll keep that a surprise for now but um yeah come and join us won't you thanks for stopping by if you like this give it a thumbs up and subscribe and i'll see you guys later bye